My name is Jamel Sharp. I am a Dean, Professor, and Guy Raymond Jones, Faculty Scholar at the University of Illinois College of Law. My morning routine uh, typically involves being woken up by one of my four children, uh, usually not my teenage son, who is now 13, um, uh, more typically by one of my nine-year-old triplet daughters, uh, asking for various things, uh, usually breakfast, though not always, um, or on my best mornings, uh, just a hug saying, uh, good morning, daddy, then a request to get up and get them breakfast. The College of Law has the benefit of one of the most loyal, accomplished, uh, and enthusiastic alumni bases of any law school in the country. And there are innumerable ways that uh, our alums can uh, reach back to the college, reconnect with us, and support our students. Uh, some of them involve the type of activities that one would normally expect with uh, alumni relations, for example, uh, alumni giving uh, and our fundraising efforts to support all of the great things that we do here at the college. But there are also a lot of other ways uh, that alumni can uh, reach back uh, and give support uh, uh, to the college. For example, uh, we have a new uh, alumni student mentoring program, uh, which connects alums with students, again, helping students navigate uh, this uh, legal profession that's very new to them. Being able to connect with folks who um, have ties to the college, have really interesting uh, professional experiences, uh, and are really accomplished in their careers can be a profoundly valuable resource as our students think about uh, what they're going to do with their law degrees. Uh, alumni teach classes for us. They teach classes for us online. They teach classes for us in Champaign. They teach classes for us as part of our Chicago program, which embeds second semester, third year students in Chicago so that they can take wonderful classes while also um, interacting with uh, professionals in the Chicago legal market. And so there are a, a number of ways uh, that alumni uh, can reconnect, um, relive some of the good times that they had while they were students, uh, and uh, also enrich all of the wonderful things that the College of Law has to offer for that next generation uh, of practitioners. The first thing that I would say is uh, I exercise no control over the decisions that would go into what we do that night. Um, you know, it was one of the pleasures of, of, of parenthood. So what will uh, uh, my children tell us we're doing that night? Uh, that will usually involve um, uh, Chinese food, most likely, their favorite restaurant, and by full, you know, way of full disclosure, one of mine as well, Rainbow Garden here on Neal Street in Champaign, uh, one of the restaurants that we have loved uh, for, for many, many years. Uh, and watching a movie, again, picked by my children. They're partial to Pixar and Disney. Uh, I fully expect that we are going to be watching, again, uh, the uh, latest version of the Little Mermaid movie, because after all, why watch something just in the movie theater when you can go there and then watch it multiple times at home as well? So that's probably what the relaxing evening is going to involve, uh, fun dictated to the parents by the children. The best advice I received in law school uh, related mostly to issues outside of the legal profession and being a practitioner. The advice that I received was essentially, know yourself, be yourself, be true to yourself. That's advice that carries through every aspect of life. Um, whether you're in the office, whether you're outside of the office, in your personal relationships, in your familial relationships. In many points in my career, uh, I have faced an issue where I had to make a choice, whether to stand on principle or to do the thing that was easy, the thing that would put up the least amount of resistance. That advice allowed me, gave me the courage, the perspective to stand on principle 
and to be true to myself. And when I have done that, I've never regretted it. That's not to say that it was the easiest path, but I have every confidence, no doubt in my mind, it was always the right one. So here I'm going to alter the question a little bit because I get, you know, I can't just pick one, right? So um, some books that I have either read for the first time or have revisited because they were so good the first time in the past year. The first one would be The Republic for Which It Stands by Richard White. That book is a magisterial historical account of post-Civil War America. And so it takes the reader through Reconstruction, the end of Reconstruction, Reconstruction, the tragic end of Reconstruction, and the Gilded Age. The second book that I would point to is one called The Antagonists, which is not a new book. Um, it's written by James F. Simon, and it describes in vivid detail the relationship between Justice Felix Frankfurter and Justice Hugo Black. Uh, the third book, again, nonfiction, I'll get to fiction in a minute. The nonfiction book uh, that I would recommend is Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, uh, which even for those of us who are familiar uh, with America's experience with racial segregation, uh, is incredibly illuminating, insightful, uh, soulful and profound in many ways. And then my, um, I, I would have two non-fic, I would have two fiction recommendations for you. The first, for those of you who love Lovecraftian horror, which I'm assuming is a very small segment of the audience, but nevertheless, you might try something new, who knows, would be The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle, which is an interesting, compelling uh, twist on typical Lovecraftian horror um, tropes. The second book recommendation I would make was actually um, uh, recommended to me by one of my friends on the faculty here, and that's the book Straight Man by Richard Russo, which I believe now has been turned into a television series starring Bob Odenkirk called uh, Lucky Hank. I've decided that uh, my time will best be spent this year getting my uh, sea legs under me in the deanship, making sure that I build strong relationships with our alums, uh, with our senior leadership team here at the law school, and generally getting the law school off to a good start um, at the beginning of my tenure as dean. But it's really important to me uh, to connect with students, to get to know the student body, um, more than just passing them in the hall or uh, you know, reaching past them to get some chips and salsa at Piers Pub um, uh, on Thursdays. So I plan to be back in the classroom next year. Um, uh, and uh, if that happens, I would be teaching administrative law, uh, which is also uh, part of my area of scholarly focus. How do I manage stress? Well, uh, before taking this position uh, and in the two to three hours a week uh, that I would have available to me when I'm not being um, a faculty member uh, and uh, a, a husband and a father, uh, I am an old school gamer, which I think many people may not know about me. Now, let me be clear, right? I mean, I started my, you know, my, my video game journey in the 1980s with ColecoVision and uh, Donkey Kong and Qbert. Uh, so when I say old school, I emphasize old. Uh, more recently, you know, again, in the few hours that I would have time, I'm not an online gaming guy, right? So I love games that uh, have deep stories, epics, that the characters in them are different at the end of the journey than they were at the beginning of the journey. And so, what kind of games am I talking about here? The Mass Effect trilogy, um, uh, for Horizon Forbidden West, uh, of course The Witcher, I mean, that would go without saying. Uh, uh, though, you know, things like Elder Scrolls and stuff like that, yeah, that's more my son's thing, that's, that's not so much mine. 
But, you know, when I have time, which, you know, to those of you who are wondering, I no longer do, uh, those are the, that's what I would do to, to unwind, is immerse myself uh, in an epic story of adventure, danger, and ultimately triumph. So my favorite place to travel, I'm generally a city guy. I know that a lot of people kind of like to get away from human civilization and immerse themselves in nature in order to, uh, to, to, to unwind, de-stress, and reset. But I'm more of a city guy, right? I grew up in New York City, right? I was raised, worked, schooled there. And so when I travel, that's kind of what um, I'm drawn to. And so uh, London is one of my favorite cities. Uh, I go to Orlando, yes, Universal and Disney. No, it's not the most interesting in the world, but my children love it. Uh, and uh, Chicago, which is probably uh, my very favorite city uh, in the world. I remember the first time I ever went there was to take a deposition uh, when I was a practicing attorney in New York, uh, and I just marveled at the city's beauty. All right? I didn't think that I'd seen a city uh, as, as marvelous as Chicago. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, send me to a city and I'll have plenty to do. So I think the rankings um, and all of the rankings can provide a very valuable source of information uh, for students. I think that uh, they can provide um, uh, advertising for what we do here at the College of Law, bring the excellence of this institution to prospective students who may not otherwise uh, know about us and lead them to learn about us. But my position is that we will not, cannot, uh, chase a particular ranking. We focus on the fundamentals of legal education, and those fundamentals in turn focus on the very best student experience that we can provide, the, the very best launch that we can provide into the legal profession. And so rankings capture some elements of how we pursue that teaching mission, that mentoring mission with excellence, placement, bar passage, etc. but no ranking captures them completely. And so we participate in the rankings to make sure that the information that they report is accurate, that those who consume the rankings have the best picture of the College of Law that those rankings can provide. Uh, but we make our own independent decisions about what constitutes excellence in legal education. So I'm gonna alter the question a little bit here and focus not so much on who inspires me, but on what inspires me. What inspires me are acts of um, bravery, courage, and selflessness, particularly in the face of concerted, consistent adversity. When somebody sees the tide coming and they decide to plant their feet and remain steady, understanding that they themselves may not benefit from the actions that they take or the decisions that they make. And so they are doing it selflessly for the benefit of others, either in the short term or more long term. And so, for example, um, Volodymyr Zelensky, standing up for his country, defending it, defending his people. Um, journalists in parts of the world where press freedom and the journalists themselves are under attack. Um, John Lewis in the United States standing up for racial justice, understanding the personal consequences that are likely uh, to fall on him and those al allied with him. Those conspicuous acts of selfless bravery uh, I find deeply inspiring. Those are examples to follow. They help us rise to be our best selves in those moments when our best selves are needed. So what would surprise people? Hmm. I don't know what would be surprising so much as, 
maybe not maybe artists who are a little less well known. I mean, you got the regular things. Look, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm 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 a Gen uh, Xer, right? And so, you know, growing up in New York, I gotta have Nas and Illmatic on my playlist. I'm sorry, I think that's the best rap al album ever made. You can disagree, and you're free to be incorrect on that point. Other things that I would that that would be on my list. All right, um, uh, Snow Allegra is um, an artist uh, who I really like. Um, uh, I am my, not myself a Swifty. I know that would be polarizing, though that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a perfectly reasonable choice. Uh, it, just not mine. Um, uh, who else? Uh, I like um, the Doobie Brothers, right, showing my age uh, a, a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, generally anything relating to 90s hip hop, Mary J. Blige uh, is also one of my favorites. Um, uh, and, um, you know, uh, Jenny from the block, Jennifer uh, Lopez. Uh, I, I, I was remiss, right? I don't think um, any, if you're doing a 90s playlist, you gotta have everything Tribe Called Quest ever did. I, I mean, you know, otherwise, you know, you, you, you're missing so much in life, right? I, I, that, that, you know, you really gotta correct that if it's not already included. Tribe Called Quest, literally everything. So online education is going to be uh, more heavily emphasized over the next several years. But a couple of points about that. The first is, like everything that we do at the College of Law, we want to make sure that we are providing excellence, and we are providing excellence in a way that is consistent with our core institutional values. And so my intention is to bolster our online offerings uh, in three separate areas of our teaching operation. Uh, the first is with respect to uh, uh, online degree programs for non-lawyers. There are folks out there who are very busy professionals, right? They don't have uh, the time, resources, opportunity uh, to put their lives on hold for a year, travel to Champaign to study, and then return uh, to their pre-study lives. And so uh, my intent is to develop uh, an online program that allows those busy professionals to remain in their communities to fulfill their family and work obligations while still partaking of the uh, legal knowledge that our excellent faculty members have to offer. The second population uh, would be uh, undergraduate students, generally expanding uh, the uh, opportunity for undergraduate students uh, to take classes from law faculty, but also again to deliver it in a way that is more convenient uh, for them, and that would be uh, online classes. And then for our uh, law students, or more traditional law students, one of the things that I would like to do uh, over the next several years is to make, uh, for example, the JD program more portable, which is to say, give our JD students more opportunities to embed themselves a little bit early before graduation in the legal markets where they would like to practice post-graduation. Adding online programs to the curriculum will allow them to uh, fulfill their degree obligations, not just in Chicago, where we already have a significant presence, but in Seattle, in Washington, D.C., in Miami, in Los Angeles. The most joy, that's the easiest question I've been asked today, um, it's my children. Um, you know, I see them every morning. Um, their faces, whether smiling or screaming, um, most often an equal measure of both. Um, and uh, it reminds me of why I do what I do, and just more generally why any of us do what we do. In the law, as lawyers, we have a unique opportunity and privilege, and that unique opportunity and privilege is to set up systems that provide for human flourishing, that provide for the administration of justice. In other words, to create a world that is better than the ones that we inherited and that we live in. When I see my children, the joy I get uh, is working to train that next generation of lawyers that will make the world they live in that much better. Mm -hmm.